Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights, here with a recap issue for episodes 259 up through 278. Thanks, sponsors, Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication, CompC.com, Burbank Sports Cards, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Heritage Auctions, Huggins Scott Auctions, Tops, Panini, and Upper Deck. Uh, let me jump right in so we can give a, a little bit of uh, coverage to each of these uh, 20 or so, actually slightly more than 20, of the episodes of the, over the last month or so. I'm obviously still enjoying this because I'm still cranking out an issue every day other than you know, kind of twice on Saturdays and, and nothing on Sunday, but Sunday's a, a, a day of rest or a day of catch up, whatever whatever way you want to uh, spend that. Um, I find that with uh, COVID, a lot of the days start out the same and end the same, but I've got it. I'm I'm very pleased with where I am and what I'm doing. 259 was the mortality issue, motivated somewhat by uh, John Newman. I tried to make it simple by looking at hockey cards, not that hockey cards are but I have a lot less hockey than baseball. And I thought instead of trying to use an example of something that would be ultra complicated, I'd do hockey. But I found out, as you could see from episode 259B, that I realized after I listened to it, after I released it, that actually I, I it was still too complicated. You can't give your heirs, your wife, your spouse, the surviving members of your family, you can't give them a hundred steps or you, you need to simplify it and prioritize it that where they know where the value is. And I didn't do a very good job in my original episode. I think I'll come back to that. Uh, because it is something that no one lives forever, and uh, you want to do right by your heirs and not give them a problem of here's a box of cards and there's some good ones in there. It's the, it's come to the point where you just can't physically look up every card. It just takes too much time. You need to know. Uh, 259A was the investment fallacy of low pop cards. Again, it's just because something's low pop, you've got to ask the question why. So some hobby knowledge is of value. And uh, I, I think, you know, I would, again, emphasize the point that if you look at the percentage of cards that are graded and how many of them hit a 9.5 or a 10, whatever you're looking for, you'll have some idea of the condition sensitivity. Uh, if something is very condition sensitive, then that uh, it, then there ought to be a premium for the higher grades. If half the cards are coming out 10s, well, then as soon as more cards are submitted for grading, it's probably a, a card or a brand that's that's not not sensitive to uh, imperfections. 261, the, the Cyberger tribute. I've been waiting to do that. I really enjoyed doing that. A wonderful guy, one of the fathers of the hobby, a, a guy I looked up to and really, you know, an amazing guy. 262 was my episode with Rich, looking at football cards from 68 and 69. Again, Rich's wheelhouse. He's mainly a baseball guy, but football, 68 was his first football. And he, as you know, Rich remembers the details of what that was like. I would, that was a little bit of my limbo period where I was starting college. I was aware of the sets, but not actively collecting contemporary, con contemporaneously. And uh, But I enjoy doing the set reviews with other people. If you've got a favorite set, let me know, and I'll try to uh, do something with you. Doing the two together, uh, again, I'm just trying different formats, and that, that seemed to work. If you've got better ideas, let me know. 263 was Grant Westcott of ComC. Again, uh, Tim uh, Getch has built a, a strong team out there, and I think from Rich has told me they've added a lot of people, but Grant is one of the one of the key guys out there. Really enjoyed going, uh, well, first hearing his origin story, and then later doing some dueling questions with him. 264 was the origin story for Sean Barker. And uh, Mike Fruitman, in other words, they're kind of their more on their podcast they started, which is the card shop with Mike and the big dog. And they started it just a few months ago. They seem to be having a lot of fun with it. We heard about the, you know, go back to that issue if you want to hear how they got started and their friendship and, you know, how that's uh, a lot of fun for them. And then I was actually on their show, which proved it definitely was fun. 264A and B were the uh, dueling boxes episodes of kind of thinking about, again, when I'm doing an audio podcast, how can I add value or give some explanation that is not necessarily something that where you have to have video, but Chronicles is a pretty unique product that's establishing an identity by having a uh, multiple personalities, I guess. And on the Diamond Kings versus Optic, uh, you know, shiny is not always better, uh, but many people think that, I think. So I've enjoyed the duels. That adds a little interest to it. 264C was the playoff prediction episode. And again, I we'll see. We're not, we'll, we'll see how that unfolds. But, you know, one of my points was that the officials will play a big part and I could see in the other games that the coach's challenges uh, are going to be important, too. And like I said, my thing is if, if, if Luka gets treated like a superstar, then I like the Mavs chances. If he doesn't, then they won't get past the Clippers. Uh, the tribute episode to uh, Tom Reed it was fun to do that with Rich, one of one of Rich's closest to collecting friends and mentors. That was 265. 266 with the dueling questions. Round two with Drew Herndon. Drew is opinionated. Not a bad thing. In fact, that's one reason he enjoys and is good at podcasting, because if you don't have any opinions, then nobody wants to listen to you. And Drew has multiple podcasts, all of which, actually, I don't subscribe to his to his football one that he does with John Newman, but the, but the hobby ones, I try to subscribe to all of them. Uh, 267 was the paywall 
episode with Jeff Wilson. I had a few episodes before with Jeff, wanted to get into just the, his strategy of having a paywall. Again, it's a controversial thing, but any industry that doesn't have a paywall means that uh, nobody thinks the value, that there's enough value there for people to want to pay to get through the paywall. So Jeff, I believe, has tried to add value. And as people uh, contribute to that, they won't do it if they don't get value. And if they do get value, and and uh, and Jeff uh, continues to uh, improve the product and add value and add capabilities to his market movers, and that to me that's a positive thing. If you don't like it, you don't have to uh, you don't have to sign up. Uh, Two sixty eight was uh, Canadian Jeremy Lee. I was on his show and we heard his origin story. Again, I don't know that this is an American podcast or a North American podcast. It's probably a world podcast. So I probably ought to have somebody from some other countries as well, and I won't do that. But I really enjoyed visiting with Jeremy. It was a little ho- hockey-centric, but that's good. So 269, I have been reading Mike Summers and listening to Mike Summer of Waxpack Hero for quite some time. I've had him on before, but I'd noticed that he had not the def- necessarily the definitive, but he had an excellent uh, blog uh, entry on on shipping as regards our industry and shipping cards. And I thought, you know, I get some questions above and beyond that. Rather than me pontificating about it, why don't I create a conversation where I can ask him some questions that are, you know, that are not not explicitly covered in his stuff. And then he can add to what he has if he wants to. But again, he's doing an excellent job helping people uh, negotiate the hobby. Not, it's not fun to have uh, mail problems, even though, especially in the day when you're not doing, when, when shows and, and stores are restricted. 269A and B were both outtakes uh, from shows that I was on. Uh, what happens is that when I'm on these shows, it, sometimes there'll be a little snippet of, of, say, 10 minutes or less of stuff that I'd never covered in the in, in this podcast. And rather than create a new podcast, there's a natural response to where either Mike or Sean or Eric asked me something. And I thought, that's a good question. But I think my listeners might want to hear about that, not just their listeners, of which, again, I strongly encourage you to listen to Beckett Live and The Card Shop with Mike and Big Dog. They're, they're both great reads. I mean, great listens. Great reads, too, if you could read it. But again, just short clips, uh, a very small portion of what uh, was on there. As far as uh, Beckett Live, I just want to further encourage Eric to post his uh, Beckett Live. I did, actually got a question to me about that, of where where are they? And I think uh, they're still going on YouTube. But if if you, Eric, if you post to the various podcast platforms, that's my preferred way of seeing that. 270 was my fun episode with Scott Prusha of Panini, the original super fan from Beckett Publications back in the day. Scott brings personality to everything he does and uh, has really found a home at uh, Panini and their predecessors. And that was a lot of fun. So I did, did uh, another um, episode with him later on, uh, but hearing his origin story, which started at Beckett Publications. Similarly, 271, Sue's uh, Lajedai, who's doing card chat now, which again, I highly recommend. Her organized hobby journey, other than her blogging, I guess, that she started, which allowed her to come to the attention of Beckett Media and then Tops. So she's she's had some interesting gigs and is still cranking out good stuff. 272 was the dueling questions with Grant Westcott. Uh, sometimes it's fun for me to ask questions of somebody that, you know, I've kind of had some back and forth with, with Tim. I certainly had back and forth with, forth with uh, Rich and Stefan, but uh, Grant, uh, just, you know, to ask some questions. And if you're interested in uh, finding out more about ComC, you can go there directly or you can listen to that episode because Grant, sharp, sharp guy. Uh, 273 was the, my origin story of, or more origin interview with John Flemister. I knew his dad somewhat. They were at the shows in the 80s. I remember them on the scene. The Sharp family had card store, the show dealers talking about his journey. Sometimes being a collector a long time ago is not as big of an advantage as, as you would think because, because times have changed and uh, the collectors have shifted. I mean, people are still going to always love their Mickey Mantle cards and other things like that, but the hobbies evolved somewhat. 274 was the more casual interview with uh, Sean and Mike, the, their card shop with Mike and the big dog. They have some great chemistry and they really try to uh, welcome their guests and I had a good time on that. So I, I pulled an outtake from that and I had um, a couple interviews with those guys and you can see why they'd enjoy it. It's, podcasting can be fun. And it is if you're doing it with the right people, good guests and good co-hosts. 274A, was the boring cards. Again, no such things, I don't think, and commons get a bad rap. But if you're telling your friends about your hobby and you point out cards that these are boring cards, well, they may not be boring to somebody that's not familiar with cards. They'll be, they'll consider they're boring if you say they are. But if you have excitement to say, hey, here's my collection of Mike Trout cards or my collection of Will Clark or whoever it would be, if you do it with enthusiasm, the person's going to catch on that and not think it's boring, which I, I don't believe anyway. Uh, the investment fallacy, 274B, was franchise owner mentality, just realizing that his prices get bigger and bigger and bigger, 
in this industry, there will be a ripple effect. And it, it's, you know, the value of a dollar for a billionaire is different than the value of a dollar for a millionaire, which is different from the value of a dollar of a thousandaire. But all those things, it impacts, it, it, it trickles down. And so we will see next spring to what extent uh, there is an effect and, and when the, some of these new deals are signed. Let's see. Oh, 274C, the, the Goodwin Champions Hobby Box. I really had a, a good time with that. And that actually, a lot of people listen to that. Grant Sandground, amazing, very sharp guy who it turns on all his creative juices for uh, producing a product that is uh, very interesting and kind of one of a kind, unusual. 275 was getting off the treadmill with Tanner Jones. I really enjoyed uh, talking to Tanner again. I mean, we've had some episodes in the past, but he's willing to share his experience. He's got a book that shares his experience. He's vulnerable. And frankly, even when things are, uh, the, what, I, what I know from my life from actually having a heart attack is that uh, there is positive stress that can be toxic as well, not just negative stress. And so even when things are going up, it can be stressful. And sometimes you need to get off uh, the treadmill and, and take a break for hopefully a short time. But 276 was the group to the topic of analytics with Jeff Wilson, the sports card investor, uh, a very popular uh, podcast and his uh, market movers. He's seems to be always thinking about what's next. And I like that. So the analytics, I wanted to throw a couple cents in there to say, what about this? What about that? And he said, again, he's thinking about what he wants to incorporate in future versions of his market mover tools. And uh, that was enjoyable, fellow uh, uh, data geek, I guess. 277 was dueling questions with Jeremy Lee. Uh, again, I'm, it's, it was not at the level of, of Canada versus the USA, but enjoyed going back with uh, Jeremy when I, I subscribed to his podcast and I cannot, I don't think I can outlast him. He's got long form podcast and he fills up the time very well. And I'm pushing on 15 minutes now, so I'm ready to stop. But one last one, Mike Summers uh, shipping part two. I just couldn't get it within 15 minutes. And rather than break my rule of give you a 30 minute episode, I, br I brought, uh, I, I chopped it in half for Mike to uh, share some additional wisdom that he has from his uh, experience with uh, shipping. Again, most of that, if you're, you, you can go to his blog, you know, Wax Pack Hero, but a lot of what we talked about is not shipping monster boxes of cards or one to 10 cards, but everything in between where you, you don't want to lose them. You want to pack them securely. You don't want to overpay for postage. You want to make sure it gets there and you want to avoid being scammed. So I learned a lot from Mike. So I hope you did too. And if you have questions about that, uh, again, you could listen to these episodes, but you can also check in on Mike's Mike's uh, very helpful blog, which is very Googleable for uh, the shipping requirements that are helpful for our industry. So thanks, everybody. I will uh, work on the next 20 episodes. Uh, if you've got questions uh, for, and suggestions for new episodes, it's drjamesbeckett at gmail.com, all spelled out. Always eager to have uh, suggestions. I don't can't promise I can do every single one of them, but if I've got a thousand episodes I'm going to do, I bet I can do a bunch of them. So hit me with your best shot, and uh, thank you for listening, and continue to enjoy collecting. Bye-bye.